kicking and screaming the entire way. It's another Bone Shaker build. Brian, Jim and Funky thought it would be funny to challenge us to a Bone Shaker build. I immediately got them concerned by talking about classic hot rods and changing the entire casting. Let's see what happens when we discuss that. I would like to start by saying thank you to Brian, Funky and Jim. Those three guys have been really supportive the entire time I've known them and they are a big part of as to why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Not only that, but this challenge gave me an opportunity to try something I'd been thinking about for a while. Armed with measurements from the Shaker and a generous amount of poetic license, I set to work in attempting to uh, live up to the standard that these guys have set. Brian with his incredible paint jobs, Jim with his mastery of the JB world, and Funky with his incredible take on just about anything he does. Um, I really felt a little bit daunted here, so I really threw a fair bit into this one. Um, I can't say I threw much bone shaker in in the end, but I made a nod to it. I made a nod to it. <laughs> Bit of 2mm styrene sheet, cut up, using the old replicator from Micromark, as usual, check your measurements. Um, this was quite fun actually. You can see there I sort of set myself out a basic idea, and I was Intending to build the shaker is something that I would have built had I started with the same body. And um, I think I got pretty close actually. I started off with 2mm sheet and cut out a couple of exact squares. These would later form the, the basis to the, almost the entire build really. Having ensured they're right. I start marking out one square to form the side panel. I am going to work on improving the quality of these videos. Uh, it's, it's been quite a steep learning curve, but we're getting there slowly. Unfortunately with this one I do end up turning the camera off and just building, but you do get a very good gist of what I'm doing. Um, you don't lose out on a lot. <laughs> a lot of swearing and cursing and tears and temper tantrums but apart from that you don't really miss out on a lot uh, as you can see here we've marked the body up the panel up I'm just sort of putting a bit of an embellishment on there that I want to put to it and then I'll join the two sides together I'll clamp them together and then chuck them in the vise for shaping uh, try and keep this one as precise as possible so that at the end of the day I'm going to get a better result. This is technically the laziest way I could think of building what I wanted to build from the shaker. And if you saw Brian's post about this build off then you'll know that I didn't follow the rules in any way shape or form. But I really hope I wasn't expected to either. Let's get shaping. So once I adjust the Dremel into a nice or the vise into a nice spot, I grab my little milling end and into the Dremel it goes. I am wearing safety glasses, guys. You will see at the end I take them off. I am wearing safety glasses. Um, it would be very stupid not to wear safety glasses doing this. Uh, so yeah, as you can see there, it, it melts up and leaves like a swarf behind it. Um, I, I can see where I'm cutting, but it does pay to clear it away quite regularly, and it just pulls away. So I cut down close to the line. I, I leave a fair bit of green before my line. And then I change over to the barrel sander, and we just start the final shaping. It's um, quite a cathartic process, this. 
just sculpting it in exactly to where I want. Um, I, I, I miss doing this with steel. I, I really do. And it's it's quite therapeutic to get with the safety glasses. It's quite therapeutic to do this, even in scale. Final shaping with the file down to the line, keeping it as flat as possible across the two pieces, keeping all the burrs down and so forth. But yeah, we just keep it nice and flat, keep the two pieces as exact as possible. And it makes life a lot easier as we as we work on quick sand and just make sure it's nice and pretty i think here i grab a half round file and just clean up that radius now to get it out i'm going to grab my little g clamp again and it's going to clamp it off before taking it out of the vise spin it around to the next shape shape that in and then we'll have our two side panels and we can start putting the uh what will become the body together basically and this is just a small piece so i just quickly hit it with the file um it's probably a little bit boring watching this sorry guys but i thought i'd show you how i formed the basic body and from there <clears throat> it's not too hard so yeah we just sort of a lesson in shaping really or show you how I shape at least. Um, I, I do a bit later on. I've, I've made another little box and I show you three different ways in which I shape depending on what I'm doing. Um, they have their, their plus sides and downsides. So there's our two sides. And a bit of fabrication technique here. I label everything at this stage. Um, it just helps me to do it so everything goes into a container and we'll start cutting out all the other panels so working on two mil the principle here was to keep the internal dimensions correct and then I would sand the outside or shape the outside down to suit quickly cut out the front and back panels and the little little flat that will help make, form the roll pan and um, Make sure I've labelled everything so I know what piece is what and where it's going to go and you know what side's 20mm, what side's 18mm and all that stuff just so I know at a glance I can pick the stuff up and away we go. So yep, labelling everything, put it off to the side, cut them all out and just stick it together. Um, yeah, so once once the basic box shape is done, and I, I, I do put a, a tunnel through it to take the drivetrain, that, that strengthens it right up. Floors go in, and it's just rigid. I, I produced the front cowling by sticking two parts together and using a bit of putty. You'll see that a bit later on. And um, yeah, fair bit of filing, fair bit of sanding. Fair bit of shaping in this one and then the rest of it honestly there's just not much to it it's just i pulled bits out of my out of my spears cut lengths up and stuck straight bits on a little bit of shaping to form the rear diff um, that'll be shown a little bit later on but this is my concept i'd really like to see what other people do with this stuff um styrene's amazing i've seen full builds done in styrene that are just staggering absolutely staggering and i'd really like to one day to get to that level so we'll keep playing and see if we can get there these little die cast cars are neat i do love this scale and um i do want to stick with it But we will eventually we'll try some bigger stuff and we'll try some probably not smaller stuff but we'll try some bigger stuff um, so there's the little pipe i end up i end up using the mill and just cutting the back off it and sanding it down just to form a tunnel and here we go i think i'm gonna cut the middle in here so that the tunnel's got somewhere to fit 
conveniently my mill is the exact same size as that rod so that's that's handy isn't it makes it quite easy to just cut through it starts getting a little bit more exciting soon guys I thought you'd want to see the basics to how I did the the flasher bits as one would say at least flasher bits for what I did this is it's nothing more than just a box and sanding so when I say flasher bits I'm just trying to make myself sound clever I'm not <laughs> It's thanks to watching people like Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, Sideways King 75 and others like that. I was able to gain the confidence to even attempt to do die cast cars. Um, I had been doing them previously, but I had no idea about cutting them up and all the rest of it. I started on Gaslands actually. Um, a friend of mine, Phil Ches, amazing. Um, what this guy does is incredible. He sent me a message and said to me, hey, I'm, you know, have you heard of this game Gaslands? And I said, no, no, what is it? And he sent me a picture of what he was doing and I was immediately hooked. And I, I went out and I bought a little Corvette and I undrilled it using one of those, one of those um, screws with a drill bit on the end and a screwdriver. And I managed to massage it apart and found stuff around the house and stuck it together and one could say I got the bug and then um, a little bit later on I, d I was sitting on YouTube and I discovered these guys on YouTube and wow it's just been such an amazing journey and I'm nowhere near in their league and I really hope one day to come close so it, it does it really does mean something when people like Brian and Keith and so on you know they, they they help out they they really give support to new builders and it's it's so good to see and doing things like asking me to build with them I mean that's that's the kind of community that's that's been built and it's just really nice to see it's a, it's a good bunch of guys and girls and some amazing stuff being done um I'm so so blown away every time I go on the pages seeing what people are doing they just there's so much creativity out there so much creativity right, so here we go we're just welding this stuff up as you can see quick dab a dab of the old solution and let it do its job as you can see I've used that little that little bit I cut and that sort of Giving me a lazy radius, really. Easy to easy to file in. Just make sure it all lines up using the, the cutting mat to keep the back in the right place, lining the front up. Weld it all together. So there's the basic body built. Um, yeah, right. End of video. See you guys in a couple of weeks when I do another one. <laughs> Right, so here we go. We're going to cut that pipe open to, to form the tunnel through for the drivetrain. This also braces the whole thing up. I'll leave it sticking right out the front. Like I said, I, I just stuck two bits together to form the front cowling. And I used the ledge of that shelf you can see there now to eventually stick the windscreen to. Again, just a lazy option of doing it really. I try to do things the easy way. Well, there's no point doing it the hard way. But yeah, I used um, so a little resin engine there I got from Ken Overby. Um, this parts are good, but I, I highly recommend you guys have a look at what Grizz is doing over at Bearcat Customs. Or Bearcat, uh, Bearcat 3D, I think. If I can and I figure out how, I'll leave a link down to his stuff down below too. Um, no promises there I do hope I can figure out how to he's the stuff Grizz is making is just incredible um I'm kind of hoping to get my hands on some of that soon and do a build and I'm just really looking forward to it he's, he's a wizard that man absolute wizard there we go chucking the tunnel in I've shaped it and I'm just shaping the back of it so it fits onto that roll pan piece 
quick weldy weldy. There we go. Look at that. All nice and stuck together. Right, so there we go. I'll put that front piece on with a bit of putty in the side and started the shaping. Here we're starting to see the concept and um, the basic idea. Right, so quick lesson in shaping. I find that the file, the emery board and the sanding sticks are the way to go. Honestly, it's it takes a little bit longer, but you get a better end result. And the emery boards and sanding sticks, honestly guys, get to know the girls at the makeup counter. Um, way cheaper and you get big packs of it and you don't look so weird when they know what you're looking for but yeah you get different grits and you just work your way down and you can get a really nice radius hold them loose and let them do the work let them glide over and they'll just get a beautiful curving um, you can do it with the dremel i'm going to do that in a sec so i grab the dremel and the mill bit and the barrel sander i find this is a good way to rough it in and then I've got to go back over with the file, sanding sticks and so on anyway. So, in a way, yep, this is quicker. But I do find that I just get a better feel and a better... I can shape it in better using the file. So yeah, quick, quick hit with the barrel sander and... Yeah. Yep, it's rough. It worked. There we go. Now what we've got there, these are different sanding stones, so these are not so good for shaping, but they're really good for large flat surfaces, and I've got four different grits there, and they will, they'll, they'll rip it down, but they are, for doing large flat surfaces, they're really, really, really good. But there's three different options for shaping, and that's basically how I shape the tub up, and yeah, so... Diamond file, emery boards, and foam filled nail buffs. Here we go. Here we go, guys. There's the diff on, and the wheels set up, and the engine put in place. Use a bit of blue tack just to make sure everything's in the right place. And yeah, a couple of photos of just checking stance out and how I wanted things to look, where I'd put wheels and so forth. Uh, here you can see the detail I put into it, so it's all primed up. And I, used, I did the front radiator the same way, there's a bit of mesh behind there. Um, so it's all up there ready for painting. As you can see I got a bit carried away and gave it a drive shaft. And a bit of fun, eh? You know, while we're there we might as well do it. So I reached over behind myself and the first paint can I could grab was the purple in the corner. Uh, because I'd put it all together, I ended up having to paint the whole thing, and yeah, so we'll see what happens after I put paint on it. Here we go. Cheers for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thank you again to Brian, Funky and Jim. It's been an honour guys. Thank you.